Um, I've dipped into coding. Um, I always looked at it as being innovative and um, being able to uh, create the World Wide Web, what everybody uh, is on nowadays. Um, a little bit on how I actually got into Savvy Coders is uh, I went to like a little pop-up shop. It was, a, it was a, like a lot of startup companies and um, I was just walking around grabbing uh, cards and I seen a Savvy Coders pop up and uh, Miss Dez, uh, she was right there and uh, she was just giving out cards and I was interested. So I was I'm pushing- everywhere. <laughs> I was pushing. Um, I was pushing myself to actually see if I was going to be invested into um, coding before I actually pursued and um, like went through a extensive like uh, thirteen or twelve week uh, program. So um, I use uh, websites like Udemy, um, Treehouse. Uh, Treehouse, you pay like twenty five bucks a month. So that was another motivation in itself. I'm actually spending my own money to see if this is something that I actually um, enjoy doing. Um, I'm a very big people's person. Um, so for my capstone project, um, I decided to create a marketplace website for inspiring, uh, inspiring entrepreneurs uh, who are trying to pretty much get their skills developed in their uh, services that they have around the community. Um, my, my website will have two different type of, um, views. So you'll have a consumer, you'll have a consumer side and then you'll have a entrepreneur side. Uh, the key tools that I pretty much used to uh, create my uh, website was JavaScript, uh, HTML, CSS. Um, I learned, I learned, I learned a little bit about, uh, backend development, uh, but for my backend, uh, I'm using uh, Firestore. Firebase to hold some of my data uh, that I'm using. Uh, preparations. Uh, I used uh, a Trello board, which I could uh, I could show you uh, as we get to it. But uh, any uh, any questions before I get into uh, showing my project? Is it letting you share? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Look, I even had the settings right. I'm so proud of me. All right. Um, let me know if you guys can see. Yep. So um, my project name is Reach. Um, there, this uh, this web page it was mainly built uh, upon HTML pages and uh, CSS. Um, I actually converted it over to an SPA. I didn't know what an SPA was before I got to Savvy Coders. Um, it's pretty much a single page application made up, made up of mainly JavaScript from um, over the preparation and time that we put in from learning it. And it, it pretty much, um, it pretty much makes a website um, like, a, like a native app. It was really, it was really amazing for uh, all you new students. You'll, uh, you'll get to see that over the time that you're with Savvy. Uh, it's definitely helped me motivate. It, it's definitely motivated me, helped me uh, get on a direction on where I wanted to go with coding after just grabbing random information. It actually put me on a track to, uh, to build off of a great foundation. So uh, when, you, when a user comes to my profile or my, uh, my website, you're pretty much going to see what's your next project. Uh, it's pretty much going to have a search bar where you can search uh, any type of service. Let's say you're uh, like a lawn, you're trying to uh, help build your uh, lawn and you need someone in your, uh, your area. Um, for this feature, I haven't um, completely got it uh, down packed, but um, yeah, it'll go to uh, coming soon for uh, when I actually do put my web page live. Uh, and then all the all these links work, uh, have users who will sign up. Uh, as I said, I was using a fire uh, Firebase. So this is my uh, this is my back end on Firebase. Uh, so where I'll have authentication as well. So once you sign up, uh, your authentication will actually go in here. 
and I can show you. Uh, I can show you that. In just a sec. Um, this is my Trello board. Pretty much how I uh, project managed my uh, website and uh, kept myself on track uh, and on pace. We learned. Uh, we learned a lot about agile and uh, going in sprints and just getting getting something out there that was uh, a working uh, product and building off of building off of uh, what the consumer wanted and i think that's i think that's a big uh, big deal other uh, people want to see people want to see uh, something they don't want to see um, an idea because they can't work with it they can't really build off of it uh, but trello was a, this is the first time i ever used trello um, i have a lot of future enhancements and uh, a lot of stuff in my backlog that I want to um, that I want to add on to my uh, website. I'll go back. Um, we we'll go back to the sign up page. I'll show you how um, my database actually works. So if I um, let this set up an account, um, Uh, we can put that out there before that won't well, really matter. Um, and then I hit sign up. It'll actually create uh, a contact card for that user. It's still a, it's still a work in progress. Um, I'm pretty proud of um, as far as I've uh, gotten so far. Uh, where a user will, they'll be able to add their um, their photo in there. And this will be this will be mainly from the uh, entrepreneur side. And if you go to the, um, the authentic authentication, it'll actually have uh, that um, account that I just created in the authentication uh, spot. No way you can add you can add uh, users to your database. And that was that was a that was a tough one um, that I'm still learning on. I wanna I wanna um, I wanna uh, Create my own web, uh, my own database with a node, and that's that's the that's all the part of uh, being a developer is learning new skills to um, implement in your growth, which will be uh, pretty strong. Um, contact page, uh, I pretty much uh, connected this with form spree, so where if uh, someone was to uh, have any questions about my website. They can just put their uh, first last name in there, their country. Uh, I created this country uh, list with a uh, package uh, JSON. It's a JSON file. Sorry for anybody who uh, doesn't really look at code and uh, code much, but uh, I can break it down for uh, Mr. Cullen. Um, see for my form data. I pretty much added all these, and you can you can constantly add um, any type of uh, any type of country in there. This was this was a pretty proud moment for me, um, being able to uh, link through state. Learning state was a uh, was a big thing for me. Uh, so you can update that that list at any time. Yes, ma'am. Uh, like uh, I guess I yeah, I'll show you real quick. Say so, um, we want to go to a uh, Disney. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then Miss Disney will be in there. It's real. It's real uh, simple. But uh, it, there, there's a lot. There's a lot more complex stuff you can do with coding. But it's all. It's all about uh, just constantly learning every day. If you don't use it, you lose it. And uh, that's what I'm priding myself on is just constantly. Uh, Constantly learning uh, as I go. Um, one of the one of the biggest things I would say I've had uh, an issue with though is my styling of my uh, my web page. My it like I don't, I don't know how to uh, really explain it. I got a lot of stuff in my style sheet, and um, I end up. Figuring out that man, I, you gotta you gotta have something like straightforward uh, down the middle, because if you're trying to style from all these different type of angles, 
Like you'll see some of my, you'll see some of my, uh, some of my boxes. They're they're a, they're a little different. Not not too much, but uh, they're a little different. That was a that was a tough obstacle uh, that I'll have to learn from in the future. Um, but that's pretty much um, all my website has to offer at the moment. Uh, any questions? No, I'm blown away. That's very cool. Yeah, I'm I'm proud of it um, coming in with little little to no knowledge and uh, being able to develop what I got so far. That's awesome. Hey, um, this is oh, I'm sorry. This is Nicole. Um, I am super excited to see Trello um, just kind of resurfacing. I had the opportunity to work um, in Trello a few years ago with another organization that I was with. That's basically how we all communicated as a team. And that's how we were also able to, it's really user friendly. And the great thing about Trello is that everybody can work in it at the same time, right? And yes. it updates it updates immediately. And yes. so whatever you're doing in Trello, everybody can see it and you can continue to work in it and get the work done. So I haven't heard Trello, you know, in a few years. So it's really cool to just hear that that has resurfaced. And I hope that, um, organizations will potentially revisit it, um, you know, especially if you work under a team, because it is something that's going to really help teams like expedite a lot of projects and things like that. And it because it does update so quickly, everybody knows what everybody is doing and can, you know, master that task pretty effectively yeah. and efficient. So um, can't wait to hear more about how you're able to move that swiftly and um, great project, by the way. I thought it was really cool that you were able to update that system and where you put Des land. I thought that was really cool. So um, it's always good. You're right. We don't know code. So it's always cool to just see all this fun stuff come across the screen and have no idea what that means. But, you know, um, you can tell that you definitely put a lot of work into it. So um, yeah. kudos to you for that project. That was, that was definitely one thing I uh, took out of Savvy Coders, especially with the, uh, with the pandemic. And um, us being remote, uh, everybody having jobs outside of um, outside of um, outside of class. It was you really you really got what you put in for for all you um, new students. That's right. You 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 get out what you put in. So the most the, the much as much effort as you put in to learn outside of class will help you go so far. Wow, I am just blown away. Does anybody else have any other questions for Trey? Yeah, I had a couple. Uh, sure. Trey, did awesome work, man. Nice work on this. I appreciate um, it. I, I wanted to, I noticed that you were using uh, Node that you actually had a, a package file. So um, I was wondering if you could kind of talk me through your process of uh, picking different packages and then also what you decided to go with for your build process. Cause I said, it looked like you had a watcher that was running. Oh, um, so I used um, the parcel uh, parcel builder. I actually I actually have this uh, website posted on Netflix. Um, but I'm having I'm having some issues with uh, with my new push to GitHub. So <laughs> I just figured I just uh, use localhost off of here. Um, for um, sorry, what was the uh, first question? Oh, it was uh, how you're kind of choosing the different packages that you're you're using that are in there, and how your um, how you've got your build process, like your watcher, is actually set up. So, like a while ago, when you just saved uh, the Desland. save the file, and it was uh, Desland, it actually I could see the built-in, and it did your little spinner. Mm -hmm. Like, are you running like uh, npm run watch or npm dev or? Oh, um, I don't believe so. Uh, I can go into my NPM, um, my um, package, JSON, but um, I don't, uh, I didn't have too many um, NPM uh, uh, like packages that I installed. Okay. I, awesome. I, I pretty much um, installed a lot of like pretty, the, mm -hmm. I can get a little messy with my code. And that's just, I guess there's just something that I'm not sure develop and get better at and that's just pushing me to but the fact you're using linters is a is a good thing it's uh you yeah. know, just like they said that uh 
that we wouldn't have calculators. They used to tell me we wouldn't have stuff to clean our code. So, you know. yes. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, you do. The, like this index.js, it got so it got so messy. I had to start trying to um, pretty much uh, layer it out because, mm -hmm. like these these scripts, like mine's mine's is pretty small. But uh, I was uh, online and I seen I seen like a, a bunch of uh, users who have like, thousands. As apps get larger and larger, it's thousands and thousands of uh, lines lines of code is mm. it's pretty ridiculous it's got it's kind of intimidating a... but then again it's kind of like man i want to hop into that i want to uh i want to build off of this we but, were working in a file today that had eighty four thousand lines in it yeah so. that's on another level man <laughs> but uh but savvy coders they definitely um uh, they definitely helped me uh get on the path uh i'll be awesome. returning um with savvy as a ta um, well, very from, cool. uh, um future cohort that's uh, going on right now. So I'm, uh, I love to help people. So hopefully uh, I could be an asset for those who are uh, coming in. Awesome. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Colin. Great questions. Um, does, it, does anybody else have anything? No? Students that are in there now, pay attention really well, because he's right. You get out that's of it, you put into it. Oh, I'm sorry, just real quick. And Trayvon, you work for a organization where you're currently working in IT, is that correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. I work for uh, Centene Corp. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. And it's yeah, really they're... cool to hear that you are staying on um, to assist Savvy Coder. So thank you for that. It's always oh, cool yeah. to be able to give back. Oh, so yeah. That's they, really cool. they, gave, they gave me knowledge. I feel like it's my responsibility to, to give off that knowledge. To, uh, to others who were in my position. It's also the best, you, one of the best ways to learn. Yep. It definitely is. And what do you do at Sensei, Trevon? Um, I'm a uh, tech support, IT support. Oh, but, like, uh, well, I work on the service desk. Okay. But I've been working there for uh, two years. Um, I, I, I went into um, networking. I had got my CCNA, but um, I kind of fell off on it. From my last job, I kind of felt like uh, it wasn't something that I was enjoying uh, in maintaining the network. I wanted to pretty much uh, develop. I wanted to create things, so uh, I kind of fell fell off in love. But it was a great skill to uh, learn, great great co accomplishment uh, for myself. Uh, a lot of people were like, "Oh man, you had a CCNA." I was like, "Yeah, I had a CCNA." <laughs> But uh, it's nice. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you so much, Trey. That was great. I appreciate um, everyone who came out as well. Yes. Uh, great job, Trey. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, the the next student that's going to go is going to be Amy Klosterman. Um, if you wanted to introduce yourself, Amy. And, uh, and then we can get started with your project. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Amy Klosterman. I am currently an IT manager for Pi Beta Phi, where I started as an executive assistant. Throughout my time at Pi Beta Phi, I was given more and more IT tasks. I transitioned from executive assistant to information system specialist, and finally into my current role as IT manager. As the IT manager, I wear many hats, including writing queries in SQL and updating some code in HTML. I find that I am happiest when coding. Um, this led me to want to expand my portfolio in the hopes of one day becoming a full stack developer, which is what has led me here to Savvy Coders. I am starting a foundation, K Squared, where the focus will be threefold animal rescue, um, suicide prevention and awareness, and combining the two causes to support the human-animal bond. I created this SBA as a start to my foundation's website. For this project, I focus specifically on one function, which is matching the animals with mental illnesses that they are best able to support. The visitor to the website will choose that mental illness from a dropdown, which will then populate a list of animals 
best able to support that illness. Um, and then the results page will not only display the animal, but also additional information about the breed and why it is a good match. I have a question um, real quick before you even sure. share it. Sure. How did you come up with the list of mental illnesses? And then how did you, is there like, is that a thing? Or did you just kind of do this on your own? Or is there um, like, like ferrets are really good with paranoid schizophrenia or? Well, you'll see, I haven't done, unfortunately, I haven't done a lot of research, but there are, um, yes, yes, there are for mental illness um, websites that will tell you which animals and why they're supportive. Um, so like golden retrievers tend to be calm. Um, and so they are a good um, support animal for depression and anxiety. Now, can you search by animal? Like, um, not yet, but I'm just curious because that's I'm, really cool. Like mongoose are jerks and I'm just curious if they're listed and if they help with anything. Um, they are not listed yet. Um, Sorry, this is very interesting to no, me, guys. This is really cool. <laughs> there's I only a crazy couple people in my family. Right now, it is just a drop down of mental illness, but cool. I would like to do the flip. I can't wait um, to see this. Yeah, <laughs> to be able to search by animal. Like, I got a Bernese mountain dog. What's he good for? I yeah. mean, other than like eating yeah. and hugging. That's, I mean, that he's is, lovely. Um, that's part of my future enhancements. That that's I would so do. cool. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I'll stop now. No, that's you're great. <laughs> Share away. You're good. Okay. So, um, if I share my screen. I just forget how to get to this share screen. So those are my wireframes. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So this is, I went with my website, I went more of a traditional route. Um, and so I started um, just building up various pages. So K Squared Legacy Foundation is the foundation that I would like to start. Um, mission statement, vision statement, and summary of what we do. It's it's a little um, sparse, sparse right now, but more to come soon. Um, and then about us, um, um, my brother's story, <laughs> um, and then my cat, who is the CEO and president of the foundation right now. Um, oh, sorry. And then Zoom always gets in my way. Okay, and then my two pages of Animal Rescue, which Animal Rescue, the page is uh, not quite updated. So, um, but I've always loved that saying um, of the person throwing the starfish into yeah. the sea and, you know, and may not um, change the world, but it'll change the world for this one starfish. So um, that's, I love that saying about Animal Rescue as well. And then suicide awareness is where my functionality for this specific project lay, lies right now. And so what we, what you do, um, and again, it's not, there's not a lot to it at the moment, um, but you choose anxiety and then it'll populate um, just turn it, sorry, um, golden, and, golden retriever. So they are, um, a good fit for anxiety and depression and why are they a good fit because they're calm and so if you want more information at the moment about golden retrievers you can go here um and depression there's um cocker spaniels yeah. and golden retrievers are a good fit um cocker spaniels are, tend to be calm and relaxed so that's why they're a good fit for this mental illness to be a good support animal for this mental illness um this is, um, I would, like I was telling Des, this is, I would really love to build out this um, functionality. I would love to work with mental illness um, professionals and perhaps um, the uh, animal therapy professionals to see how this could be um, built out and really work as a good tool for their clients and themselves. Um, so uh, just a little bit about how I built this project. So we use GitBash and GitHub um, to push things and pull things. Um, learned so much in these 12 weeks. It's just kind of amazing. Um, we use the Agile methodology to build Kanban boards on Trello. 
Um, here are some of my, here are my boards that I built. Um, and I have a lot in the backlog that I haven't had a chance yet to add. Um, but we use the, like I said, agile methodology to kind of build and, and test and build and test. Um, and then here are the wireframes that I built out as a vision. Um, and since I built these wireframes, of course, my mind is just keeps going about what can be done and how it can be done. Um, and then, um, so the website itself, we use JavaScript, HTML, and CSS to build it. And as Trey was referencing, we, we turned it into a single page application, which was mind blowing in and of itself. Um, and to get my data back out, this data is stored in Firebase. And I am using an event listener on here to then pull the data back out of Firebase. Um, and then we are also hosting on Netlify, so soon anybody will be able to see it. Um, some of the challenges that I had was really, you know, I'd worked in HTML and I'd worked in CSS a little bit before, had a little bit of concept. JavaScript really was um, new for me. Um, I had always heard about it, of course, but never worked in it. And it was so interesting because as they were teaching, I'm like, yeah, that totally makes sense. Totally get it. And then I'd go to do it. And I was like, wait, I always um, would tell people it was like learning math, how you didn't understand at the time. But then three weeks later, when you learn the harder stuff and you went back to the easier stuff, you're like, oh, yeah, I totally got that. So it was kind of like that kind of process for me. And um, so JavaScript was kind of my challenge and putting it all together, you know, when you could do, you could just build on itself. So you could do like this, dot this, dot this, dot this. I always wanted to separate everything out and do everything the hard way. So that was definitely something that I learned. And um, so this piece was probably my greatest challenge, but also my greatest reward. Um, and I definitely want to make it so much better and enhance it. Um, so future enhancements for the website itself, um, like I said, making this so much more and I would like to do the flip. So if you want to see like I have a cocker spaniel, you know, what are they good? What kind of mental illnesses would they be good to support? Because maybe somebody wants to get their animal to be a um, a support animal, a therapy support animal. Um, and then I would like to make it responsive, tighten up the functionality, um, adding just adding more about the foundation and our story um, to the page. And then um, there's so much more just for the foundation. I would like to do literacy programs um, where children read to rescued animals donation functionality and an e-commerce store. And then what's more for me or what's next for me is, like I said in the beginning, I really just enjoy coding. And currently I work mainly in SQL. And that's when I get to do SQL stuff or HTML stuff, that's just my happy place at work. Um, so I just wanna learn, continue to learn more. I love to learn and I just wanna code, code, code learn more JavaScript, um, Node and Node.js. And then um, we asked our um, TA and mentors, what's a good, if you were to start with a, um, a platform, you know, a, a coding platform, um, what would it be? And he recommended React. So I would love to start with React and learn all sorts of things. Um, and to become a junior developer or something um, more where I get to code more. Because um, in my current role, I, I'm an IT manager, so I work a lot with vendors and do a lot of project management, and I'm really happiest when coding. Um, and then uh, do more with my foundation. So that's just a little bit about me and my website. And does anybody have any questions or... That was amazing, Amy. I, I want to say, I actually know um, somebody that I work with in Chattanooga. 
uh, he helps us with our students down there and he's just this great guy and his um, he adopts every you know, when his when his pet passes away he'll he'll get a new one he'll adopt a new one and so this is the kind of site because what he does is he takes them and he's like well i'm not sure what they'd be really, really good for but he starts oh. training them to be service animals oh nice and to yeah. help um so this is exactly that's exactly where i mean he doesn't have a ferret but that's exactly where i was <laughs> Was right. he would love that because and, it's this and, dog and he knows that it's part this, part that. And then he's like, I wonder what they would be really good for. But this is this is fantastic. I love yeah. and also and all of the, the veterans that that um you could do. I actually my our friend of ours uh that we work with that Elaine uh that Savvy works with, um he's I think he's the president. Is he the president? I don't know. He's he's a part of this group that's all about uh, suicide awareness for veterans. In yes, St. Louis, that's one of my hot spots as yes. well. Yes, and they are ramping up, and uh, this would be something. This would be so wonderful for them. This is this is wonderful. Thank you. I really enjoyed Thank this. Does, does anybody Thanks. else have any other questions? I'm still trying to think of what a ferret would do, but. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cullen. Uh, very nice work on this. Um, I was kind of curious, like, if, for, and I'm sorry, this is going to get technical again. But um, no. as you uh, as you were working through Firebase, like, how did you decide to set up your structure for storing what the different support animals were, and like, how did, how did you make those choices going through there? Um, you know, that's that's a great question because I did set it up multiple times, um, just trying to figure out the best way and how it would pull the data. Um, and I can actually show you, I ended up setting it up just under, um, so this, no, sorry, too many tabs open, oh goodness. Okay, so this dropdown is actually hard-coded. Um, and eventually I would like it to be dynamic, um, but at the moment, it was just easier to set this up hard coded. And then, so I, this information is all set up as one um, document. Um, and so in here, do, 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 Firebase, there we go. I, you can see I tried a few different things, um, but the way that I ended up setting it up is I created the service animals as, so the service animal itself is one, the um, parent document. And then I broke it down into Cocker Spaniels and Golden Retrieve, the animals, and then each component about the animal. So, and I would love to add more fields here um, more resources, more traits, things of that sort. And so, but yeah, That's it took awesome. me, thank you, thank you. It took me a few minutes to go back and forth and then you delete it and then you had to start all over. It was, yeah. Well, but it, I figured it, with your uh, SQL background as well, you were probably like, how am I going to make these relate? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Well, I talked to Brandon and he's like, Amy, this is not a relational database. And I was like, I get that, but it would be so much easier <laughs> and just because that's just how my brain works. And he's like, you're going to have to get over that. So I did. Mine works that way too. So I know, I know the struggle. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Hey, Amy, great work. This is Nicole. Um, I know you're not one of ours, but I just wanted to tell you great work also because mental health is so real. And during this pandemic, that's been one of the biggest, like, talked about subjects as it relates to people being at home and just trying mm -hmm. to adapt. And even with these kids going back to school and just virtual learning and people losing their jobs, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And so, you know, um, and even when you look at um, households that may have a husband and a wife or, you know, something like that, we have been talking about in workforce how we could provide resources to those individuals, of, you know, who were just kind of trying to adapt being home with their loved ones, mm -hmm. you know, for all day. And so, you know, um, to hear that you literally have animals who can help kind of minimize some of those 
mental health components is really good information to know because I don't have any animals, but I do see a lot of people in my neighborhood with animals and they just talk about how they bring them comfort, right? right. And so yeah. to see that you can literally match um, the personality of an animal to a human being's, you know, personality to ensure comfort is really cool. So great work. Thanks. And, you know, now, you. you know, that's good information to get out. So I definitely look forward to seeing how you continue to build out your site. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. And if anyone has any recommendations, you know, I'm on LinkedIn. You can always, hey, you know, how about this? Or, you know, any resources, anything like that. I'm, I'm open to all suggestions. My brain keeps going with it. So um, I'm hoping to really build it out. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Does anybody have anything else? Amy, nice this is Patrick. Uh, great job. job. Yeah, good I'm job, so Amy. impressed. Yeah, I, I always... the foundation is such a great idea. I really love it. Really it love it. is. <laughs> it's and wonderful. It's I have, a I have a military background, Amy, so this is very, very important. My brother's actually paranoid schizophrenic. He does not have a ferret, but he loves <laughs> the cats. Um, but you, <laughs> this is so important, these kinds of things. And PTSD, like you said, Nicole, coming out of this pandemic, civilians are going to be seeing a lot more PTSD cases and experiencing things that they've never thought of before that the military's, I don't know, but used to, but we're, we've seen. Um, so this is wonderful. I am. Thank you. You K squared is um, um, so. My, my brother died of suicide nine years ago, and so that's where um, K squared is. Me and him, kind of our legacy. Um, which I I've wanted to do something for, ever. Um, and his, you know, I love animals, but he always said if I win the lottery. I'm going to open this animal rescue and you're going to run it. And so um, to save all the animals together. Anyway, so it's kind of, um, you know, my background is in, I got a degree in uh, social work, which how I ended up in, you know, coding is just, I don't know. Sorority. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, so that's where the idea comes from. And I would love to start a veteran pro uh, program. Yeah. Um, literacy with kids, animal suicide prevention, and kind of um, connect them all. So make sure you you message me, Amy, because even if you know to get this off the ground, um, so that I can connect you with him, the 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 guy I'm talking yeah. about, the vet that, that's running all this. Because he's, I mean, he's a he's an odd guy, but you know, I don't know a vet that isn't. So, um, but he's yeah. he would love this. So that would be wonderful. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing this. It was, it was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, if nobody has anything else, uh, I'd like to introduce our last student, Patrick, if you would like to just, uh, you know, I remember when you first started, Patrick, I remember, well, I remember when all of you first started, like probably better than I remember my son's first steps. Um, <laughs> but when Patrick first started, he actually, um, how many, you messaged me what one or two ideas for your project, but he yeah. texted them to me and they were so long. Um, these long, like epic thesis style text messages to me, yeah. like Des, what do you think? Cause at the beginning, you know, I'm the only person that they know really. And they don't even have a clue. They're like, they think I'm smart until they meet everybody else. Then they're like, yeah, they don't know what have anything to do with me after that. Um, but I was so impressed, Patrick, with your ideas in the beginning. I have no idea. Like, I know what you did it on, but I'm, I just can't wait to see this. So without further ado, please, Patrick, take it away. It's, it's so good. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Um, well, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Patrick Knepp. Um, thank you all for being here um, and seeing our Capstone projects. We've all worked very hard. Um, it's we really appreciate you guys being here. Um, uh, but a little bit about me. I'm a manager of a small laser engraving business. Um, and I've been doing that for almost a year now, um, but I have a background in zookeeping. So I was a zookeeper for over five years. Um, I was a zookeeper in Des Moines for four years, where I'm originally from. And then um, I moved down to St. Louis uh, to work at the St. Louis Zoo. I was there for about a year and a half, and then I moved. He's to literally my son's hero. <laughs> like my son is fat because he did the zookeeper for a day for his tenth birthday, and 
I told him that Patrick was a zookeeper at the zoo that he did the zookeeper for a day thing, and he's just like, "Wow!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're my my eleven year old's hero. But, but yeah, send him my way. Um, but yeah, so I was a zookeeper for five years, um, but it just wasn't. Um, I mean, it was my dream as a little kid. I always wanted to be a zookeeper. I did it for five years, but it just I wasn't as happy as I wanted to be. Um, and I've been looking for a career change for a while now. Um, and I was really interested in the tech career. Um, there's just so many opportunities. Um, and there's so much you can do with it. Um, and I was specifically interested in web development. So I started some classes online um, through Code Academy. Um, and they have a web development course. So I was starting to do that. I was really enjoying it. Um, but it was just a really slow process, kind of doing it on your own. Um, and I was really looking for you know that extra push to help me actually learn the code. Um, and to help me and teach me how to be a good web developer and get me to my goal of being a full stack developer. Um, so luckily I stumbled upon Savvy Coders. Um, I think I applied and I think Des literally texted me, called me, emailed me back in like two seconds. And I was like, okay, well, what's I this? did, it's a little creepy at first, <laughs> yeah. but you know. I just submitted that. <laughs> I'm so awkward, it totally overrules the creepy factor. But no, it's great. Um, I'm so glad I'm here today. I've had a really great time throughout the bootcamp. By no means was it easy, um, but we made it. We, our projects are all finished. Um, and uh, yeah, we learned some great skills um, from Agile, using Trello boards for organization, um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, and then, like I said, just um, your basics to be a really good web developer um, from you know project planning to using resources you have to complete things as well. Um, but yeah, and so uh, on my capstone project, um, I'm, I'm really excited to show you guys. Um, when thinking about my capstones, I want to do some uh, do it on something that I was passionate about. Um, one of those things is you know the outdoors, camping, and hiking. Um, so I wanted to go with this hiking idea of finding you know hiking trails. But when looking at websites, there are already some really good websites out there um, that are good hiking resources, and I didn't really want to recreate the wheel. Um, and I wanted to do something that was different and fun and just get different, um, but also kind of fit the same need. Um, so I created a random, the random hike generator. So what a user will do is they will uh, get their location and a few filters, and then they'll press, you know, find a hike. And then my site will return one single random hike um, based off the filters that they give. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the idea of it. Uh, it the idea that's nice because it cuts through the clutter of your normal kind of Google search of hikes. Um, with those searches, you get a lot of results and you get a lot of the same results. Where with my SBA, you'll get um, some hikes you've probably never heard of. Like I was, you know, when I'm testing it, I was seeing some hikes and I was like, ooh, I gotta write that down because I want to go on that. <laughs> like, so it's kind of a cool that way you got you find new hikes that you never found before. Um, and then that's also kind of just like that kind of fun, spontaneous, you know, what do you want to do today? Well, let's go on a random hike, you know, kind of stuff like that. So um let me join that uh but yeah i can go ahead and share my screen here or unless anyone has any questions before or as i do that feel free to ask uh, uh, is there a website um for random hike yeah so it's uh i it's actually yeah it's live so if you go to randomhike.com you guys can follow along or play with it um uh yeah, so it's um, actually, because uh, I hosted it on Netlify, it's, host, it's hosted there, um, and then the name is actually randomhike.com. Um, so it's up there, so you guys can find a random hike if you guys would like, um, whenever you would like. Um, so like everyone else kind of showed you, here's my Trello board. Um, I'll kind of go over this real quick, um, and my process of how I went through that. So I, have, I started here with my potential features. This thing was just unreal and so long, and it's still really long. Um, but then I put some things in my backlog on things that I, you know, really wanted to um, put into my site. And then these are the things that are ready for development. Um, they're not quite there yet, it's not ready, but um, soonish, um, that's the, those will be the next things I work on. Um, and then obviously I have my in-progress development. These are things that I'm working on currently. Um, you know, I'm working with Firebase to um, do my sign in and login. Uh, it's at to a point where it kind of works, but it, it just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So that's, it's in development. Um, CSS and styling is always in development. Um, and like with my profile and my login, like I said here, I'm still working on those. Um, things that need to be fixed um, are right here. Um, things that maybe were completed, I put them back here and fix, you know, fix them. Um, like my Jumbotron, um, which you'll see here. Um, what did I say here? Um, 
it just says, yeah, still needs to uh, size it down for larger screens. I haven't um, done that yet, but we'll see here. And then all the things I've completed are in this right here. Um, but we can go to my website right here, randomhike.com. Uh, so right up here, we have your header. Um, this is the title of the website. Um, we have your sign up and your login right here. Um, and then back here is uh, my Jumbotron, um, which I just mentioned earlier. Um, so it's just uh, pictures and it's also a randomized background. So if you go to different screens, the background will change. Um, if I reload it right now, um, it'll change to another picture. Um, some of these are pictures that I, I think there's about 20 pictures I pull from in my array of uh, photos. And then um, about half of them are actually my photos. I think this is one of my photos as well. Um, this is in Colorado, I believe. Uh, but so it's kind of fun to kind of put my photos up there and kind of make it a little bit of my own. Um, and then down here, oh, I got to move this tab. Sorry. Um, then here's my footer. Um, so I just have, uh, you know, if there's any questions or if you're on the website, you find a problem. I did set up a contact us form. Um, and this just goes through form spirit. Um, so you fill this out. Uh, you know, you send a message like, you know, wow. <laughs> and that'll be submitted. Um, and it goes to form spree. And then I'll, I'll receive an email with whatever message that it says and stuff like that. So I can uh, fix the site if there's any potential issues. Um, so we can go to how the uh, hike works. Um, so yeah, you put in your um, location. Um, and I'm going to do a different location than St. Louis. I'll do uh, Denver. Let's say we're going to Denver for the weekend. We want to do a hike. Um, so we'll put in our location, Denver, Colorado. So this radius right here is how far out from your point you'd like to go. Um, let's say 25 miles. Um, and these ones down here are optional. You don't have to choose anything. If you have no preference, that's totally fine. Yeah, I want it easy. You want it easy? Okay, well, Please. I think my hike, we're going to a little intermediate. We'll do your hike next. How about that? All right. <laughs> I'm not going on yours. So yeah, I like to do at least, you know, five miles and then a difficulty of intermediate. Lord. So when I press this find a hike button, what's it going to, it's going to, um, it actually goes through two API calls. Um, and for you guys to do know, um, APIs are, um, it's just basically data that's stored on the internet. Um, and I'm pulling this data and populating it on my site. Um, so I use a MapQuest geocoding API. Um, so that uses um, the city and the state. And then that'll kick out a latitude and longitude for that location. Um, and then I can use that latitude and longitude in my next API call for my hiking project um, where I get my information because it doesn't use, you know, city state, it uses latitude and longitude. So I had to, and I don't, you know, know these latitude and longitudes, but so it, I needed the API to convert it so then I can plug it in. Um, and then the uh, hiking project API also uses, I can plug in that radius and I can also plug in that minimum length. Um, so let's say, but I also have here a difficulty of intermediate. So after I get that final array um, after my hiking project, then I have to filter through that array for the difficulty. Um, so that it'll, it'll bring back all the hikes within, um, you know, the filters that I have already. And then it'll filter through those and kick out anything that um, isn't intermediate. And then from there, I do another randomized function and then it returns one single random hike. Um, so we have our filters all filled in here. We'll go ahead and find a hike. Do, do, do. And there we go. Um, so all this information comes from my hiking project API. Um, so right here, Apex Park, that's the name of the trail that you'd go on. This is its location. This is how long it is. Um, and this is just a little summary about it. Um, right here, there's a photo. And this also comes from the API. Um, and then this is the latitude and longitude. I used a, a MapQuest API another app map waste API, which um, populates a static um, location map. Um, so I use the uh, latitude and longitude from my hiking project API and plugged it into that one. And then it populates this image, which is super nice. Um, and then from here, um, we have some uh, different things on here. So we can save this hike, um, which I'll go over this kind of functionality later. Um, it's not currently working, but it'll, when you have a profile, um, this will be a feature you can use. You can save this hike. Um, you will be able to like comment on it, star it, um, leave some notes uh, in case you want to come back to it. Since it is a random site, you may not find this hike again for a while. Um, so it's nice to just be able to store that if you really liked it and kind of keep it in your profile. Um, and then also right here is the hikingproject.com. So I thought I'd show you this. This is where I get my API information. Um, this is a really great website and it's all done from people like you and me. Um, so they have this app and they 
put in this information and these are their pictures. Um, and so it's kind of really great. And this is a lot more information uh, on here that I don't have on my site. So if people want to know elevation and things like that, um, it's really uh, great for that. Um, but we can go back to my site. Um, and let's say, you know, maybe this hike, we did this one the other day or whatever, and, or it's just, you know, we want to find another one. We'll just go back to find a different hike and that'll just take us right back to the homepage. Um, yeah, does anyone have a hike they'd want to put in there and see if we get any results? <laughs> Is it only in America? Yeah. Okay. I don't know, I haven't gone hiking here in a while. How about the Katy Trail, if you hike the entire Katy Trail? That? Yeah, so, so yeah, um, the, the Katy Trail is on here. Um, oh, no. Yeah, so, but it, you have to put in these functions, then it will populate, and then maybe the Katy Trail may pop, may, uh, pop up. Um, but that's also one the, thing. The, the just, city and state kind of thing. And yeah, then. so I just need a city and state, and it can be anything. Okay. okay. St. Louis. Yeah, we can do St. Louis. Yeah, let's do a local one, see, find anything. Oh, I can't spell Missouri. There we go. And let's go probably 50 miles out of town. We'll see if we can find anything good. Any preference on length? We have uh, one mile. This is your minimum length. So uh, one thing I'd miles. like to change. 10 miles? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, so with this, one thing I would like to change. So this is just the minimum um, length. So this could populate, so for instance, the Katy Trail is like 284 miles long. So no one wants to do that, obviously. No! It's, yeah. <laughs> so um, this would pretend hike where I'd like to do, you know, hikes between five to 10 miles and then hikes between 10 to 15, just so like you're not populating hikes that are like 20 miles long or 25 miles long when you really just want to do a 10 mile hike. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, 10 miles is also very long. So, <laughs> yeah. but uh, and we'll do an easy one for, well, if it's 10 miles, oh, easy, but damn it. we'll go with this. Sorry. That's okay. But yeah, then once again, so all my information populates here. So this API just didn't have a picture. That's why it's just not showing there. Um, and then here's where it is um, in relationship to St. Louis. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, we can go up to my assign. So here's my login page um, and then my sign up. Uh, so we can sign in right here and I'll show you my, what a profile would look like. Um, okay, and then we'll go ahead and sign up. And I get I get an error message, so it's not completely great, but I'm working on it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm getting an error message, but my my uh, information actually does get stored in my database. Um, but then I'm trying to I have to pull it back, and it's I'm having some issues, but we'll get there. Um, so what's nice, so I put in, Patrick, this isn't, this is hard coded right now, but in the future, this will say, you know, hello, like whoever put in their name, if Des just signed up, it'll say, hello, Des. If Amy just signed up, it'll say, hello, Amy. Um, I'll have some other features in here. Um, they'll have the ability to um, put in a profile pic they'd like. And then this is the area where um, their hikes will be saved um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they can reference those and they can leave. And um, what I'd like to do with those is, like I said, that leave ratings, you know, if you didn't like a hike, Maybe you never want to do it again, and you can come back and look at that. You can do star ratings. You can leave notes and things like uh, that. Um, so from this page, you can go back to find a hike, and I'll take you back to the home page, and we can find a hike from there. Um, but yeah, and that's pretty much all my site. Um, um, yeah, I'll leave this here for you guys. Just you can, if you guys want to look at that's randomhike.com. I am on GitHub. I'm at Patnet. My capstone is right there. If you are interested in looking at the code, I'm more than welcome to. Uh, my email is right there. If you ever want to contact me through that, more than welcome. And LinkedIn, I'm on that as Patrick Neff. Feel free. I'd love to connect with anybody on there. So any questions at all? No, that was great. Other than the like links. I didn't like that. <laughs> like yeah. you can make it like, you know, half you a mile. One for you guys. We'll do it. Up. We'll do a short one. Let's see what comes up. <laughs> yeah. Something nearby that I would actually do. Okay. We'll do... Oh, let's do Wait. no preference and we'll do an easy one. How about that? Okay. That's thanks. Let's see what comes up. Here we go. So we'll go to this one. We'll go to hiking project and see what else Look is on there. Look at that. 0.2 miles. That's right yeah. up my alley. There you go. Right there. Right on the Merrimack. Flat. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> 
so yeah you can find any kind of trail on there so it's just really great um okay. and this site yeah and this unfortunately site's, it's still outside and i don't like that but that's all right yeah <laughs> um but this api is always growing too it's always changing because people keep adding different hikes and all that stuff because uh, i know there's hikes that i've been on that aren't on this yet um but that's totally okay i mean i could also go on these hikes and populate this data and use the app and um, be a part of this project. And I mean, since I'm using this API, I think it would actually be really cool if I did that, so. Um, but yeah. That is awesome. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. I've got a couple questions for you on it. Um, how did you determine like what APIs you wanted to use and, and like go about choosing um, and implementing them? So um, with my hiking API, there was really only one option. So that's why I used that one. Um, and I was really lucky that that even existed. Um, it was a really, really great resource and I got a lot of good information from it. Um, and then I used uh, MapQuest uh, because uh, Google uh, had just a lot of functionality I didn't need where my MapQuest APIs were just very specific. I just needed the latitude and longitude um, and that's what my API did for me. Um, and then the map one is also just, you know, it just did a static map. So that was really easy too. Where um, I was looking at, you know, Google geocoding, but there was so much extra that I didn't need um, so I just kind of decided to go with it, MapQuest. That's awesome. Uh, one of the things we always talk about is like the, I hate developing thing when you're trying to figure something out. And then the second you get it, you're like, I love developing. Yeah. What was that moment for you on this? <laughs> every moment. <laughs> um, every little step, I'm like, gosh, it's sucks. Oh, I figured it out. It's great. You know, um, and yeah. I Actually, think I got a bunch of those text messages. He's right. It was more like, this is the worst. Oh my gosh, it's so great. It was really good. <laughs> yeah. um, it, I, I feel that way anytime I work with an API, so it's okay. <laughs> I, I, I mean, the biggest thing was getting my API to work and getting that functionality. It was insane to me. And, you know, every little step, I'm like, oh, that worked. I'm not getting an error. You're like, this is insane. This is cool. And then you get the next part and you're like, okay, well, this is another hour's worth of work that I need to figure out. But, I mean, honestly, I really did. Overall, I just enjoyed the experience. You know, I had a couple, you know, parts in the boot camp where I was like, yeah, I'm not going to make it, but here I am. Um, you push through and it's, uh, it's really great. Now, when you do have that aha moment, you're like, this is cool. This is fun. So it's, yeah, I had a really good time making this. The frustrating moments when you're learning to code, the frustrating moments are some of the most frustrating and humbling times of your life. Mm -hmm. But man, when it works, it's like crack. Yeah. And like, it's, wow, I can't yeah, believe I did this. Working on this project and you know, you're just, it's frustrating and it's hard, but you get to that, yeah, it's the next step and you're like, okay, what's the next thing? I'm so ready. And your mind's constantly on it. So, yeah. That's but, awesome. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to this, that, like that doesn't stop. It's, no. It, yeah. <laughs> I, no, it's I not. wake up in my sleep and I'm like thinking about like functions mm -hmm. or building my HTML to tag and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> also the <laughs> Trello boards are so great. Like I learned that with the Trello, like I could just quickly put a note to myself for yeah. the next morning. Uh -huh. I know I have to start having like a notepad by my bed or something, you know, <laughs> or my laptop just open. But uh, yeah, it's been a great process. I'm so happy. Well, this is awesome. I am yeah, very so nice work. impressed. Thank you so much. I, I've, thank you everybody for sharing these with us as well. This has been really cool. Thank you, Cullen, for all your questions. This is great. Does anybody have any other questions for any of my students? Hey, it's Nicole Patrick. Great work. And so when we look at um, exercising, right, everybody, you know, during a pandemic, want to get some exercise in. And so you're looking at hikes and the fact that you, you, you know, there is a website that you can literally put this information in and find a trail and look at the miles. And one of the things that made me really laugh was the fact that you talked about latitude and longitude. And that's always been one of those things that always just kind of threw everybody just off track a little bit because it was so hard to try to calculate so the fact that you <laughs> you you have a tool that you can put the latitude and the longitude in so that you could you know just kind of measure that is awesome um your story is always so unique also because um I was just talking with my manager really quickly and it was, she just said, oh my God, like from zookeeper to IT, you know, what's such a difference, but you find in a lot of um, areas right now, and I was just sharing with her that there's a lot of people that you hear that are in like really high profile positions that will literally leave their job and go to like another position that will be totally different from what they were doing, right? 
Yeah. And so um, your story is really cool and unique because when you think about zookeeper, you don't, first of all, you don't meet a zookeeper on just no, an no. everyday basis. But secondly, yeah. just to hear that, you know, you do see that there is potential, you know, some other things you want to do outside of that. And so this was really cool and just a tool that um, I definitely look forward to seeing happen where you can add some additional information to just kind of see where can I hike in just my local neighborhood in my local area and how it was really cool that you were able to pull up somewhere close for Des, you know, so when I think about walking, we walk parks. You don't think about hiking, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Or you walk down streets or in your neighborhood, but mm -hmm. the fact that there's somewhere close for you to hike and you can just put this information in and it'll locate the area for you is really, really unique. So great work. Yeah. The only other thing that I might add in the future, Patrick, if you could, is um, you know, which ones have restrooms on the hike? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I'm a woman and you know, that's important to me. Absolutely. Um, you know, other than the fact that I don't want to walk that far. But if I did want to walk that far, that's an important thing because, you know, it's it's illegal to pee outside here in America, I believe. Um, and I don't so, think you want to knock on people's doors and ask, can you use the restroom, right? I've done no. it. I don't know about you. I've done it. But whatever. Uh, yeah. So exactly. So that's that's, yeah, that's, really a, cool. that's a good point. Yeah. I, I, if it's on the API or not, I don't. Yeah. I, who knows? I'm sure that there's a restroom API somewhere. Like all the restrooms in America. Kelly, were you going to speak? I think Kelly was going to ask. Were you going to ask a question, Kelly? No, cool project, though. Um, I'm with Des. My, my computer screen is going crazy, but I'm with Des. I, I do need the restrooms on my hike, too. So <laughs> See? I'll, I'll hike with Des. <laughs> yep, we're good. All right. We'll hook up and hike. I also need more shade and a place that I can bring my dog. So it needs to be animal friendly and, uh, and, and, and bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot, I don't know if the bathroom is, but I think a lot of that information, like dog friendly, that is on the hiking project. Um, and I'm sure that there's something for the restrooms. I am positive. Yeah. And I'm sure there is that too. And yeah, my, uh, API example. Yeah. There wasn't, is it this? Oh yeah. So here's what APIs look like for those who mm -hmm. are curious. So it says this, um, this trails and then this whole thing is a hike and all the information. You have the name, which I pulled onto my site, uh, the summary, the difficulty. Um, another thing with the difficulty, so on their site, they have it as, you know, colors. They have black, blue, green. They have blue, green, like ski, blue, black. slopes. Yeah, uh -huh, exactly. So I had to change that and change the value of like intermediate, beginner. Black equals this. So that people can understand it. Um, and then I- I don't ski either, by the way. Oh, I didn't either. It's outside. <laughs> it's too cool. But um, another thing I'd like to do, um, right now I'm only searching for green, blue, black, where I'd like to do a green, blue, and a black, a blue, black. Um, those are like the inner steps. So those are getting skipped over right now, um, just because I haven't found a really good way to- Categorize. Put those in there without having too many difficulty filters. So yeah. um, that's something I'll play with. Or, so that's something in, my, in the works as well. That's an interesting thing. That's one of the most interesting things. I don't know about you, Colin, when I was coding actively um, is is categorizing things like that. Because how, you know, that takes, that's a lot of end user. That's the UX UI. It's, um, it's paying attention. Like, how would this make sense to somebody else? Um, how are they going to use that? And that takes a very different point of view. So oh, that's... Yeah. Taking your opinion out of it is one of the mm -hmm. toughest things. Yeah. Thinking about the user instead of what you like is, yeah. It is. Well, those were wonderful. I am so impressed. Um, there wasn't even anything in my orange juice. It really was just orange juice. Um, but I'm so impressed. You guys are just so amazing. Uh, I love my groups. My groups are always the best. Um, anyway, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, thank you for paying attention. Students that are going to be there tonight. Uh, I just posted you, you be there at six because I want to talk to you because I want you to start talking to the other students and telling them how amazing this was. Um, and the things you learned, it's very important. Um, so you realize that I'm not just harping on you because I feel like picking on people. There's a reason, and I do believe in you because I believed in all three of these guys. And look at them, look what they just did. It's incredible. Um, you guys were amazing. Thank you, Cullen. Thank you, Nicole. Um, I think that uh, Kelly just got kicked off on accident, but um, she's one, thank you so much for everybody for being here and for making this such a success. Thank yeah, you for thanks, this together. Yeah, we couldn't have done yes, this without you. you guys.
Well, yeah, thanks, guys. Well, I love you guys all very much. So some of you I'll see later on. The other three, well, you're not going anywhere. You can't hide from me anyway. Um, so I will, I'm sure, see you soon. Okay? So thank you. Great thank you, job. I'm going to go thank put something in my orange juice. Perfect. Colson, right. I love your picture. Yeah, Colson's picture is fantastic. I know. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.